Am I okay? Am I back online? This fucking modern technology. This fucking modern technology. Fuck. No audio. So let's repeat again. Two thousand. Today is two thousand twenty. May sixth. Three o'clock. Thirty nine minutes. In the afternoon, San Francisco time. Am I doing okay? Hi guys. Oh, okay. I'm back online. Yay! There we go. Mutable data structure. The fuck modern technology. Fuck. You know. So I, actually, my head my headset is set is not plugged in, and uh, then I plugged it in, and then the OBS crashed. And I have to restart and restream. Okay. So today we have quite a few topics. I prepared for you. Let me show you. Okay. Uh, let me show you. Magnify. Wait. Okay. Magnify, and uh, show in browser. So we have three major topics. Uh, and let me know which one you want me to go first because they, I think they, they are going to be long. So the first one is male and female voice singing. So there are spectacular uh, Chinese singers who is male, not not the Western trans fuck. Okay. Chinese male, but they sing in female voice. I mean, exactly female. Like you cannot tell. You, you know, it's just female, and they can uh, switch between male voice, f- female voice, and voice acting voice, like anime anime girl voice. It's fantastic, incredible. And we have castrato singing, which is uh, people uh, eunuchs singing. So I'm gonna talk about that. There are several songs I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you the links and so you can listen to them afterwards. So that's the uh, first general topic: male with female voice singing. Then we're gonna talk about the other big topic is uh, keyboards and mouse. How to avoid mouse hand pen and Logitech G Hub, the lo- the new Logitech software for their gaming keyboards and mouse is worst shit. And uh, best mouse. Uh, best mouse buttons map. Okay, I'm gonna talk about that. And uh, middle, middle button, mouse middle button, and mouse right button. The intricacies and complexities about those things. You know, there are, there are many things to talk about them. So this is my current mouse. Uh, many things to talk about them. So that's the so so first topic: female and male voice. Singing, then keyboard and mouse, and so the other topic is uh, Chinese. Okay, I'm gonna sh- uh, tell you about Chinese writing system and Chinese input system. How do you type Chinese? I'm gonna break it down so it becomes easy to understand. <laughs> and Alan, Alan here is our expert. Uh, Alan studied Chinese for like ten years. Alan is a linguist. So which one should I go first? Male, female voice singing, type it, okay? Or keyboard and mouse, or the uh, Chinese, you know, writing Chinese. I'm gonna demonstrate writing Chinese, like with a pen, with a pen tablet, because I have, I possess this, I possess this, I possess this. This modern technology, okay, you see tablet. So put, so type it. Which one shall it be? And uh, which one shall it be? So let's see. Mouse ergonomics. Okay, let's um, let's talk about that. So let me read the comments. Mouse, okay, mouse. Two person wants mouse. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Alan. Uh, good morning, Mark Berezov. Are you in Russia? Uh, good morning, Ripper. Quarty, Quarty theory. Who needs Comac anyway? <laughs> Emily needs it. First time here. Hello, and Alan. Uh, you from uh over the world? Uh, Mexico. Saludos. Saludos, Mexico. Uh, okay, so you guys coming in a little bit. Uh, get away. Uh, is daily show. So okay, so I let's t- start talking about ma- mouse. Okay. Uh, 
yeah, I did. Uh, I did a video talk about uh, writing in Chinese, but you know we can do it again. So anyway, so let's go back to the uh, topics. The mouse, okay, the mousing. Okay, the first thing is I'm gonna tell you key, uh, Logitech. You know, Logitech came out with a new uh, uh, software uh, for their gaming keyboards and mouse. It sucks. It sucks donkey ass to such a extreme degree that. I would stop buying my uh, Logitech mouse and keyboards. Okay, so so Logitech has a new. Uh, let's see if I can hub. Yeah, Logitech G Hub, worst mouse software and worst keyboard software. What the worst shit? You know what they are trying to do is that they are trying to uh, catch on with the cloud system. So before, so before this version G Hub, their software is called Logitech Gaming Software. Basically, a keyboard driver, you know. So when you buy a, a gaming keyboard or a mouse from Logitech, you install this Logitech gaming gaming software. So you can, um, you can um, hold on a second. So you can program all the mouse keys, for example, program into the memory in the mouse, so that you take the mouse to work to any computer, Linux. Microsoft Windows or Mac, you just plug it in, and your mouse buttons will be what you programmed it to be. You know because they are stored in memory on the mouse. That's fantastic. And this this is a Logitech uh, gaming software. That's the name. But however, about in 2019, they came out with a new version, which is I think it's a complete rewrite, a total new software. It's called Logitech G Hub. The fucking gaming gamers, idiots. So what G Hub, you know? So G Hub is trying to be more like cloud. It's it's trying to be completely cloud. So that I mean, the goal, I suppose, their uh, purpose. I mean, the intention is that you know, if you are a gamer, you know, you're a teenager gamer, idiots. You play all the games, you know, tens tens of games. So that your mouse, you want it to be, you know, depending on which game you are, the mouse button changes, you know, changes, you know. So in order to do that, you know, either you have to put a lot more memory, so you have more profiles, or you can, you know, connect to internet, cloud-based. So they, so that's what they are doing, cloud-based. But the problem is that, first of all, the G Hub software is extremely lousy. You know, G G Hub's software is very bad, and uh, you know, G G Hub software is extremely lousy. Like you, can, you, it's hard to use, not intuitive. And also, I found that it's difficult to program if you want to you know uh, set your keys or map your keys or buttons into the uh, the hardware itself so that's the logitech G hub is it really sucks donkey ass it's in, impossible to, to use you know because I, I I found out because I was trying to um, you know I want to reprogram my mouse you know I want to change some buttons so I went to Windows I downloaded you know the latest uh, G Hub software and and it, it it basically bricked my mouse like because I cannot set the buttons I want to I you know I started to change it and I cannot able unable to change it back so I stuck with buttons that I never use you know so it becomes you know I have uh, five extra buttons on this mouse then but after using that software they all screwed up so the buttons they are doing functions I don't need the Logitech G Hub fuck. And this is followed by you know the razor. Don't it never ever buy anything from razor. Razor is doing that. Razor with their you know these gamer idiots. There's you know they they cater to gamers. So their software always have some kind of fancy name. For example, Logitech G Hub. You know hub their ass. And razor have their you know what they call. You know there's, there's some idiotic name. Razor uh, software. Some e electron. Some shit. You know the gamers like that, Kyo or you know whatever, the, the uh, Doom or whatever. Idiocy. So Logitech G Hub, okay, don't buy it. So, so, so their new uh, software screwed their software so bad that I think you know before I think Logitech is the best software possible among all gaming um, among those gaming mouse devices brands I've tried. Logitech is the most the best software because for me 
I'm not exactly a gamer. Actually, I'm a very addicted to games, you know, but that was before, you know, in the 1990s. So today I don't play, I don't, uh, I haven't played three ga games. But anyway, my point is that for me, when I buy a mouse, I want a gaming mouse because usually, almost always, gaming mouse has much more functionality for a programmer, okay? I'm a programmer. Most so I browse the web, I have a lot of custom uh, buttons and setups. For example, I can press a key to do things. I don't have to control something, something, you know, fuck up your fingers. Everything is single press. For example, copy, paste, switch to last ta tab, previous tab, close tab, back to previous page, next page, you know, it's all, and then zoom out, zoom in, you know, magnify, it's all within the mouse. I don't have to switch my hand, you know, between mouse and keyboard and do, you know, spider hands fuck with control, alt, meta, fuck, those, those, the emac thing. Those are RSI inducing, so you want to avoid that. So, 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 so for me, a uh, programmer, you know, I, I want to. So first of all, you want to usually some other mouse are good, okay, but they are not gaming mouses. For example, let me show you. So here is my, uh, you, you know, you just search for Xardi keyboard, and you'll find my keyboard blog and mouse. So all these mouses, you know, most of them are, you know, branded as gaming mouse. But some of them are not, you know, for example, this one, uh, Logitech MX Master, those are not branded as gaming, but so they are very good as well. And also Logitech MX and Logitech MX Ergo, the trackball, very good. But, but in general, the gaming mouse has far more, much more features, you know, like 10, 20 buttons, it allows you to do lots of things. So. The choice of buying a mouse, usually you want to go with gaming mouse, usually. But this to Logitech MS, MX Master is good. So gaming mouse, but once you buy a gaming mouse, you are kind of into the gaming community fuck, you know. So their gaming software usually looks extremely ugly, impossible to use. You know, they want to appear to the gamers like high tech, you know, non-standard buttons, non-standard window with fancy borders, neon, you know, like high tech, you know, fucking space out spaced out fuck in you know impossible to use but anyway the logitech the, the their software logitech gaming software before is very good but now with g hub you cannot it's hard to program your uh mouse and stuff so so, so that's one of the thing so any any comments questions uh so what the fuck how can mao have a uh how can what the fuck how can mao have an ergonomics what Meth consciousness says, okay, Manuel Lara says, I thought you were going to have a trackball mouse. Uh, yes, I have. I'm from Russia actually, but I do not live there. I'm in UK right now, okay. Break the loop says, but setting them up with G-Hub is pain in the ass until you figure out the config interface. Uh, so, the good news is that Logitech might still have onboard memory. Yes, that's a good news. Break, loop, break the loop says Logitech G Hub interface is indeed annoyingly unintuitive. You know, it's not just unintuitive because I tried to use it. I there's something I cannot do. You know, I cannot set the buttons to what I want. So it's I think it's I I don't know for sure, but I think it's beyond just being unintuitive. Uh, unintuitive uh, because it it kind of bricked my you know this mouse you know I I was using it so great but I was thinking changing some buttons then then it's good at that but luckily here's the important thing the Logitech gaming software you know the older version l named Logitech gaming software is still available on their website so you go there download it now and download it save it okay just in case you not be available anytime soon but the question, you know, there's one thing I don't know. For example, I'm thinking of, I want, you know, I'm thinking of getting this mouse, for example, this gaming mouse, this is new in 2009. So if I get this mouse, you know, I, I'm, am I stuck with the G-Hub? You know, it, you know if, if I cannot program my keys into the memory, then, then basically I, I would have wasted my money on this mouse. But 
so the question is is the Logitech gaming software you know the older version will work with this mouse I don't know so you know this is so a uh, pretty bad situation uh, for Logitech so that's one thing okay let's talk so let's uh, let's talk about the other topics so go back to keyboard and go to um, um, how to avoid mouse hand pain okay so some people it's a frequently asked question someone you know asked me about they have a hand pain with the mouse so how do you avoid it um, so two things I think that's the most important okay uh, w one thing I do is you uh, use a hoover click that means when you move the mouse cruisers you don't have to click like I never clicked with my mouse that's a great time saver I mean that has saves your hand it's incredible I like all, all the things you see I'm doing right now I'm not clicking anything I just move the mouse stop there and it does a click click so this is uh, usually called drill you know I, I just call it hoover click so I have this article that tells you how to set them up for Linux for uh, Microsoft Windows and uh, for Mac yeah they are available for all these three platforms and I tell you how to set them up you can just search for Xali keyboard blog and you'll find uh, this article so so hoover click is the most important thing in my opinion if you want to save you know if you have hand pain with the mouse then the other thing is okay when you hold the mouse okay let me show you some videos then let's see hold on a second let me see if I can uh, show the big picture uh, no I don't have it set up so in order to set that up the OBS might crash uh, I don't know so let's try doing, doing this so you see my mouse so so this is normally hmm. hold on a second see if I can so normally act, actually I don't I don't I never hold the mouse like that you know the palm grip this grip this grip is going to do you do you harm because because you you you, you want your hand to be in general like that like natural position you don't want it to be uh, flat like that so if you do and and this puts tension like tension and whenever I see people do this on, on mo in movies for example Jurassic Park you know I see them do this move things and click you know it, it's funny like it, you can see extremely awkward you know they click that's pain so usually I just I try to not hold your mouse at all I just nudge it push it push it around especially with uh, auto click so I don't have to click you can see my windows turn let me show you you see my windows turn I'm not clicking anywhere and I can scroll let's go to a long page I can show you my scroll you see uh, spin wheel so it's fantastic so let's go back to uh, there okay so I'm back here let's put the So yeah, so avoid mouse pen. Try to use Hoover click, click. You know, there's one thing important about Hoover click is that you have to get used to it because you know, by now I've used it for like 7 years or 8 years. Um, but I remember the first time I tried it after one day I cannot get used to it because every time you stop the mouse you do a click. So you are, if you are not used to it, you know, it's very annoying like all of a sudden you it's switch your windows very annoying so you have to actually you know spend stick with it for a few days get used to it uh, basically you'll be you'll get into a habit of always parking your mouse somewhere that's not active like you know for example you know otherwise you'll click into a link for example I you know I put it on a link you'll click a link so you have to um, try to stick with it for a few days to get to used to it. By the way, now they sell you know eye tracking devices. So I haven't actually used that, 
and I think that is a, a, a good um, device to use with hoover click like when you stare at something you do a click but I'm not sure how good that is some gamers are using using that so hoover click is a one great way to save your hands from mouse pen mousing pen uh, the other thing is you know just don't hold your mouse like you know palm grip you know always like not you know don't touch it at all when you are not using it so that's the most that's the, and I have uh, instructions on how to set up the Hoover click. Um, so that's I think that's the most important thing. The other thing is about you know how to buy so you can try a ergonomic mouse. For example, this one I think it's very good uh, trackball uh, and also um, best trackballs Xarpic. So this is I think these are the best ones. Logitech MX Ergo, Elecom Huge Trackball, Emily has that, Emily is using it, uh, Elecom Deft Pro Trackball, uh, and Kensington, you know, this one is the cheap, cheapest one. The only problem with this one is it only has two buttons. So anyway, I'm not going to talk too much about trackball because we did before, about how to choose a trackball, what are, what are the differences of uh, the many uh, trackballs. Of course you can also get a vertical mouse you know so this one so let me show you some vertical mouse for example you have things like that very vertical so like this one this one Logitech MX you know this one um, I've never actually used a vertical mouse but they are not very appealing to me because what happens is that with the normal mouse when you press you are pressing down you know there's a gravity you don't have to but with a vertical mouse because it's sideways then you have to exert force you have to kind of like squeeze some sort of squeeze motion so that you know that means more stress for your hands so I'm not sure I don't know for sure, but I never because I never use the vertical mouse. But I, that's they are not too appealing to me. I rather you know, for example, this MX Sculpt, it's not extreme vertical. It's rather you know still kind of flat. So I th think maybe this is a better choice. And there are also also other weird ones. For example, this uh, 3D ergonomic ones. It's a it's a stick. You know, you move the whole thing. Um, I think it's too much trouble and also you could always try you know the you, you could always try the pen tablet for example let you see uh, do I have auto click on yes I have you see I just move my pen but actually when you use a pen you want to turn the auto click off because otherwise it's very annoying it's because for the for the pen it's very easy to click uh, something uh, on the Mac, the pain is problematic yeah, because since the upgrade, yeah. Anyway, so you could try a pen. So, what else? Break the loop. I'm actually trying auto click now and I like it. Oh, super fantastic! I'm going to try auto click. Okay, so, uh. <laughs> Okay, what do you think? So Mark says, what do you think of the way that more and more laptops now just have pads to move your finger instead of mice, which use your whole hand? So track trackpad, you are talking about trackpad. So if you are using a trackpad, you know one way to avoid problem is that you want to turn the touch click on. So you know you just touch the trackpad, it'll do a click. Because otherwise you have to press hard on the bot usually on the bottom side, you know, of the trackpad. That that's very hard and annoying. Creates hand pain. And also track trackpad pad makes force your hand to be that way. You know, usually you want it that way. So but trackpad force your hand that way. I don't like trackpad trackpad myself because then your fingers is ru is rubbing on the thing all the time. You know, that's kind of uh, very. Um, I do not like that feel using your fingers to rub your on, on a pad 
uh, so Ripple says uh, Ripple says the way you suggest moving a mouse with your finger seems like it would work even better on a large trackpad yeah so you know so Apple Apple their trackpad is actually very good you know the their latest version because typically on a trackpad you can feel it when you move your fingers on a surface your finger doesn't feel good okay just like your phone you you know rubbing you know rubbing your fingers on a glass very um, the feeling is not so good but however however Apple their their trackpad if you have seen it touched it you know the the version the white version it feels great but however I, I don't think I like trackpad because with trackpad you your you your finger after a long use you have this syndrome of you have this syndrome of you know making your hand like in this position or in this position all the time <laughs> you know so because I you know because I'm using a tablet let me show you actually let me set up the um, can I set up my can I set up my um, so I'm going to set up my camera so it you show full screen okay but I might be out for a minute let me try it Yeah, uh, the OBS have a problem because every time I uh, every time I try to set up the preferences, it crashes. Every time I save a preference, it crashes. So uh, I cannot. So let's not do it then. So let me just show you this trackpad. Okay, so, I mean this is uh, my Microsoft uh, shit. I don't want to show the shit on my table. <laughs> this is <laughs> so. This is my uh, Microsoft Surface tablet uh, it's it's not the best one okay it's it's not bad okay but, but once you use the pad like you have to your finger is you know stuck stuck in this position after a while you don't I don't feel good I rather prefer to use a pen pen is much better so that's about that what uh, so next next topic okay So how long have I been talking? Uh, okay, I don't, I cannot tell. Now is that data somewhere here? Twenty nine minutes already. Shit. Uh. Okay, let's talk about next thing. So that's uh, how to avoid uh, RSI for your mouse hand. So let's see next thing. Best mouse buttons for uh, browsing web. Okay, let me show you. So I've got this. So my mouse right now is this one, uh, not that one. They have uh, this one is uh, wireless. I have a older wired version. So this this is my mouse. And. Uh, you know this is my setup for browsing the web okay so I'm not sure you can see it yeah, let's let's do this okay so what you, what you got is um, browser back button and uh, wait not this one not this picture default setup this is this one Okay, so this is for Windows. Browser back button. This is um, close the current tab. These two keys are the most easy to press. And browser back uh, back and close tab is frequently used. These two buttons are uh, next tab and previous tab. And uh, the mouse scroll wheel, you push it to the right, it's zoom in. Push it to the left, it's zoom out. You click the middle 
wheel the, the mouse wheel is a uh, default zoom um, and that's about it and this button this thumb button I set it to a uh, middle click so you know th th there's not enough buttons actually I also want a button for copy and paste copy especially copy it's one of the most frequently used um, command because once you select something you want to copy typically one after you select you almost always want to copy it so normally you press the right button then a context context menu then you have to select it that's no good you want to rather you know use the mouse to select and press a button it will just copy or you switch your hands back to the keyboard then control C that's no good so you want a button on the mouse for copy and also paste would be nice but uh, but it, but I you know I this this mouse only have one two three four five kind of five extra buttons is they are all used up so you, so the more buttons uh, the better so that's about that for keyboard and mouse uh, anything else yeah so another thing let me tell you another thing so. You know, actually, so I asked people. I did a poll on Twitter. I, by the way, Twitter banned me yesterday. So I, uh, Twitter banned me yesterday. Let me show you the picture, okay? Okay. So, uh, ni, uh, Nimashen, Shikosiko. Are you the guy on uh Discord? So he says, why don't you control plus scroll wheel to zoom in in Windows? Yeah, that's very nice. Windows has that feature. However, the problem is on the Mac, you don't have that feature, which is painful. On the Mac, you, you cannot, there, you know, there's no shortcut. You cannot, you know, control scroll wheel or the command scroll wheel or the option. It doesn't work. You cannot zoom in and zoom out that way. So it's a problem. So you see, for example, I, so I got this mouse. So I have three profiles. For example, right now you are seeing um, red is for uh, Mac, blue is for Windows, and uh, white is for Linux. So I have three profiles, and this mouse only allows three profiles. So when I'm on Mac, I'm using Mac profile. On Windows, Windows profile. Why? Because on the Mac, so be because for example, on Windows, if I'm on Windows, then I do not need uh, you know, uh, to program a button to zoom in and zoom out because on Windows to zoom in and zoom out is very easy. You hold down Control key and and uh, push the wheel. Very easy and intuitive because you know zoom in zoom out. They are they are actions such that it's most fitting for the wheel. It's just like volume up and volume down, sound volume. But on the Mac, you don't have that. So so on Windows, so so here's the problem. You see, on Windows. I do not want to program an extra button for that. Why? Because that saves me, you know, those buttons for doing something else that I need to do, such as copy and paste. But if I do that on the Mac, then I don't have the, you know, I cannot zoom in and zoom out easily. So, so, um, so that's why I have to do it on the mouse. But in general, you see, it, these these things create frictions because I'm using this mouse, so I'm used to, you know, I'm used to nudge the mouse wheel right or left to zoom in, zoom out. Now, but if I switch to Windows, and sometimes I'm, I'm on Windows, you know, if I want to make the button map to be the most efficient, now in the case of Windows, I do not want extra buttons for zoom in and zoom out. But however, the thing is, I'm used to this mouse, so so I have the muscle memory to do that, you know, to zoom in and zoom out. So there's kind of a conflict, you know, which one you're going to choose. You want the most optimal, efficient button mapping for your operating system, or you want to have the convenience of muscle memory, you know, staying the same muscle memory everywhere with this particular mouse, you know, so, that, so there's these kind of issues. So wh why why is this issue interesting because this is interesting because when you for example me buy a mouse or you 
you know you want to you want the most optimal you know we are nerds we want the most efficiency efficient mapping of the buttons but then you you run into this problem you, you know you have two choices either you have the most optimal efficient mapping of the buttons such that the most easy buttons are mapped to the most frequently used functions you know that's the most that's the best mapping optimal mapping of the buttons either that but if you do that then you have a problem because you use using the same you know hardware but once you are on a Mac you have to change your thinking you know because on a Mac this button do something else it's no longer your muscle memory so in that sense it's inefficient because you it's it's kind of like model okay you have to know which you know you have to know w what is your current software so there's this issue so so the point here is about the concept of optimal you know utmost efficiency it's not an absolute idea so there is you know there's a trade off there's no absolute idea of what what is the most efficient key mapping it depends on you know there are issues complexities so that that is the point i want to say because normally you know we you know nerds without thinking you know without actually actually going through all this we intuitively think there is one universal most efficient you know key you know button mapping or key mouse uh, or mouse button mapping but that's uh, usually not the case the other thing interesting is that you know that's that's true you know the other thing interesting is that for example i design a lot of keyboard uh, mappings you know for emacs for example soft light keys and i also have tons of shortcuts on win for windows or mac so just just like the mouse situation you know i'm thinking i want the most efficient one you know one map to rule them all the this this mapping is the most efficient but actually that concept is kind of um it's not absolute because I realized, you know, you know, I've been doing this. I've been remapping keys every week for like past ten years. Every week, every time you relearn, you know, tr trying to find the most optimal mapping for for at least Emacs use. So I want the best ultimate efficient mapping. But I realized there are issues, just like the mouse. For example, I realized for me th there's a difference between the ultimate efficient mapping for me personally versus the ultimate efficient mapping for the general uh, users out there because there's there's a there's a significant I mean a difference of these two choices so if I you know if I create the utmost efficient mapping for me it would not be good for other people so that's a problem so okay, so maybe I think that's it for today. I kind of um, what do you guys think? Kathy says it does zoom in Windows. Uh, Modo mouse, Modo soft, Modo soft like key, smarts. Okay, so I'm, I'm so so. What's the next topic? Uh, let's talk about random then. So Mark says I know this is not related to mouse, but uh, by any chance have you read? any car Jun and if you if so what do you think of him <laughs> okay I can talk about that you know so I was in community college back in 1991 to 1993 Foothill Communal Col Community College which is a uh, they are like the first two years of university in USA but it's very cheap you know that's why they are called community colleges so I went to community colleges so what one of the class I took is psychology so I studied psychology, you know. So so they covered Ka Jun, Ka Jun, you know, uh, you know, one is is one of the big shot in psychology. My impression of him is is he's he's an idiot. <laughs> he is, you know, he's uh how, what what's the word? He's you know one of the personality dis disorders, schizo uh, podo. That's season. Now he says in here. Uh, you know, so anyway, anyway, let me let me just finish this. Uh, what's the name? What's the technical name? Uh, schizoid pedo or something. But anyway, this 
there are there is a personality disorder such that you know some people is very weird such that they always talk about nonsensical ideas they have like it's almost like they are talking by a god you know it's like they have a vision they talk in a very strange way you know some people in history are like that very famous mystics you know they, we usually call them mystics so not schizoid there's a difference between schizoid and schizotypal okay that's the word right yeah where is season we need season to be here let me show you schizotypal yeah schizotypal personality disorder so let's read some of it So magnify with my mouse shortcuts magnify you know without going to my keyboard just one single button press so schizotypal personality disorder uh, is a mental disorder characterized by severe social anxiety thought disorder paranoid idea paranoid ideation oh there's there's a word ideation wait is that a, a proper word paranoid ideation derealization, transient psychosis, and often unconventional beliefs. Yeah, so that's Sezen, I believe. She, uh, <laughs> she, she told us. People with this disorder feel extreme discomfort, blah, blah, blah. But um, I pre I'm pretty sure this is the right word, or am I confusing with another one? Schizoid, schizotypal. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, schizotypal. Okay, so let's see symptoms. Comorbidity, blah blah blah. You know the academic jargons. Comorbidity, genet genetic, social, and environmental diagnosis. Here, ideas of reference, strange beliefs, or magical thinking. Yeah, that's a one. So some people, you know, ideas of reference. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Susan would know she can tell me <laughs> in detail in great, de great depth you know the the thing with personality disorder is that if you don't if you don't have it you you cannot you don't you don't understand it unless your relatives or friend has it then you you know then you kind of know but otherwise you for example when i read this i, I i'm going like what you know for example it says one of the uh, symptoms is strange beliefs or magical thinking so I've, if I have never seen a person like that, I, I know I have, but if I haven't, then I wouldn't know, you know, what do you mean by strange beliefs, like what, for example, like what? So anyway, one of the, you know, symptoms is uh, uh, strange beliefs or magical thinking and uh, abnormal perceptual experiences and strange thinking and speech, paranoia, inappropriate or constricted affect, strange behavior or appearance, yeah lack of close friends yeah so anyway it's somewhat similar to schizo but anyway the the thing i want to say about this personality disorder is like mystics okay some people are mystics like they have connection with god they talk in a strange way they have like they they'll tell you they see something you know like what here says you know strange beliefs or magical thinking so kajun when I was in college, you know, taking a psychology course, that's what I think, you know, he's one of those guys. <laughs> Strange fuck, you know, he's talking about weird ways to, you know, do things. So I never, I never had, um, I never had high thought of him, Ka Jun. I, I think he was kind of so, some sort of crackpot. Until, here's an interesting thing. Until, you know, these days, Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson, I'm sure you guys know, Become, become became extremely popular and I have studied Jordan Peterson in the past few years you know watching I'm watching quite a few of his YouTube and Jordan Peterson I highly respect him you know you, you know this personality some of you may not agree the these so-called controversial uh, persons am I still alive let's check so Jordan Peterson, so it turns out, you know, I highly respect Jordan Peterson. You know, I think he's extremely knowledgeable. He has content. He has real content. But however, 
he has been saying he's saying you know he's he const he he often mentions Ka Jun. So it appears to me and he often talk about Ka Jun. Appears to me he highly respect Ka Jun. So I was like kind of surprised because I I, I think uh, Ka Jun is like a, a crackpot. But anyway, Jordan <laughs> Peterson respects respects him, so maybe he's good. So that's that's my opinion about Ka Jun. Anything else? What's up, Alan? So should we um would that be it for uh today or something else? Let's see. Four twenty four. We begin at three thirty. So we have we can do uh five or ten more minutes. Anything else, guys, say say something. Okay, so that's it about uh, mouse and keyboards and Kajun. So let me talk about something I want to uh, say. Okay, so so here, you know, the Japanese keyboard. So this is a ergonomic keyboard, Japanese keyboard, in 1983. It began as a word processor. You know, J Japan is really uh, ergonomic, uh, progressive. You know, they they <laughs> they had ergonomic keyboards since 1983 lots of them actually you can see I have pictures you, Japan has you know 1990 by 1983 they have quite a few uh, different ergonomic keyboards from different uh, companies Tron, NEC, uh, another NEC they are different M type you know and this this uh, PC something and they have thumb shift keyboard from 1980 so Japan you know they are uh, they are uh, far ahead when it comes to ergonomic keyboards, but actually, they, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing. They never actually caught up because in Japan, mostly vast majority the majority of people they still using basically American keyboard, just just like this, almost exactly the same as U.S. keyboard. But anyway, so so this one is old keyboard and someone you know from Japan there's a video you can watch typing on this uh, new input method so someone bought one of these and took it apart and and swapped the key switches to Cherry MX so you can see so this is uh, the key switches and they swapped it to Cherry M MX key switches so now this is how it looks like okay what uh, what else what what's the, okay so what's the next one to talk about keyboards we talked about keyboards uh, Chinese uh, let me show you some writing Chinese okay so because I want to show that so I was working on this. There's a new keyboard. Okay, George showed me this one. Actually, I've seen this before, but George showed it to me. So let me show you that new keyboard you can buy. Just go to my website, Xardi Keyboard, and you'll find it. So this is a new ergonomic mechanical keyboard. It came out in 2019, September. Uh, so I just wrote this page. Uh, basically, I didn't do much study on it, uh, so I didn't. I haven't read the reviews exactly what what people say. Who made it? Is it really good? You know, do the full analysis on this keyboard. I haven't done that yet. But however, it appears to me this is a very pretty good keyboard. Okay, and it's not very expensive. Hundred twenty dollars on Amazon if you buy it in USA. Um, so I, you know, I don't know who is this company called, uh, you know, they call themselves Call Mechanics Project 0001. So this keyboard is pretty, is very similar to, to this Kinesis Freestyle. They are kind of in the same uh, category. I know this one, Kinesis Freestyle, this Kinesis Gaming, you know, they branded as Kinesis Gaming, but the real actual model name is Kinesis Freestyle Edge keyboard. This one is very good, and Reaper has it. 
and this one uses the same software as my as my um, Kinesis Advantage 2. Right now I'm using right now I'm using uh, let me show you just for a change you see I'm using my um, my uh, ultimate hacking keyboard which is fantastic and by the way you see my um, my tenting system you know that's a grip <laughs> let me show you this <laughs> okay this is a hand grip so when you are tired you grip it you put force on it and I have my of course <laughs> my twirling balls Okay, what, what else? Oh yeah, the uh, writing systems. So let's see if I can create, uh, let's turn off auto click and put my keyboard back to the thing. Close window, save us, uh, discard changes. New. Okay, let's see if I can write. Yeah, fuck. Why is why is what white background? So I don't want any uh, selection. Oh, so now there is something wrong with this pen setup. Shit! Why haven't I tried it before? Right now it's not working correctly. Okay, I you know I know what to do. So I need to. <sighs> Justin Scoffy, how are you doing? Welcome back. So Emily says M type. I should do something with that. Uh, with what? Quality theory. Uh, quality theory. <laughs> okay. <laughs> quality theory. Quality theory is dependent on Alan. I just came here from watching one of the Joe Rogan interviews with Joe, Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Uh, so I, I respect Jordan Peterson. You know, when you talk about these controversial personalities, you know, on the web, you know, all kind of opinion fly, uh, flies. You know, some people will say, oh, uh, all these millennial idiots. You know these YouTubers they don't, they know nothing they don't they are not even qualified to say anything about Jordan Peterson you will see some of these YouTubers you know they have sizable followers you know like uh, let's say 10,000 or 50,000 or 100,000 a few hundred thousand followers and you know these YouTube millennial YouTuber idiots in general they are all idiots you watch their channel there's nothing nothing you know so what's what's the difference you know when you create, when I criticize someone, you know, th th there is a thing called substance. Okay, substance. What does it mean? You know, there are tons of YouTubers. You know, you almost almost YouTubers are the millennial generation because YouTube. You know, YouTube began. You know, in uh, began became popular in two thousands, and that's basically the ma millennial generation. They started to thrive. You know they are teenagers, so the vast majority of YouTubers, you know, the with million followers or something, they are all like millennials. So I I have studied them, you know. You watch them, you know. You watch all of them. Basically, they, you know, they, many of them are gamers. A, a lot, a, a big a chunk of them are gamers. Then they are also political commentators. Then there is Joe Rogan, you know, things you know, idiots like Joe Rogan. You know, they, anyway, so these are YouTubers, you know, famous YouTube stars. They have millions of followers and they make, in many cases, they make a lot of money, you know, more than programmers. In, uh, in some cases, they are millionaires just by doing YouTube. So you watch them. So what they are, they, are, they have no substance, you know, they are like zero. They are, they are fucking idiots. You know, it doesn't matter what's their subject matter. You know, some of them, they talk about gaming, okay. 
some of them talk about political commentary some you know some some are anti-social justice people a lot of them i watched you know i've talked about this before you know then there's team pool okay team pool idiot you know they, they talk about their things i watch them no substance okay some some for example there's a green there's this girl you know very kind of nice uh, girl called green what's what's her name green something Lassie Green, Lacy Green, Lassie Green. Okay, she is. She's. You know, think, she think of herself as the sex expert. You know, she do educational stuff for you know women things or teaching how to have sex. You know, vagina. You know, pussy fucking. How to how to use a dildo, dildo, and things like that. Dating. You know, they, some some talk about you know some women talk about dating stuff, and and also a huge category of them are f makeups. Women are into that, you know. It's a huge industry. Makeup, they they just they teach you how to do makeups. Except Ksa, you know, who's got substance. That's right. <laughs> okay, let me explain. Why why I, I you know so you watch their stuff. Almost doesn't matter what's their subject, you know. They their channel is focused on. You in in summary, you find that there's no substance. No content, zero. No. What What does that mean? By substance, substance. I, 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 what I mean is that. Suppose you are talking about programming. Okay, you can talk about programming. Or, or you, uh, what's a good example to present my case? You know, let's say programming. Okay, I mean some some subject there is actually you don't need substance such as makeup. Well, you need some artistic skills, but it's not like you have to study it for ten years. You know. But for example, let me talk. Let me let me say something I want to say. For example, let's say when you are talking about the subject of religion, okay, or when you are talking about the subject of politics, you know, a lot of YouTubers they comment, they do commentary on politics. Or if you are talking about the subject of say, um, let's say programming, okay, programming. Now you guys are programmers, right? So this is a subject we know. So programming. So let's let's say you 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 want to talk about programming. But you have to have substance, okay? Meaning that you spend ten years, not not just the average as an average programmer, you know. Oh, because everyone gets old. Eventually, everyone will be like ten, you know. They have ten years or twenty years experience in programming, okay? Everyone, everyone, you get old because every then everyone will be. But substance means you really spend like up to twenty hours a day, like um, <laughs> like our Justin Scarfi study on one subject you know you dive you put your blood you you know you you cough blood to to dive into it then you have substance okay you have substance you know you know the subject well you have you you react you you know you know it inside out you know what's going on then if you do youtube you talk about that thing that's substance okay so in other way you know you know one way to judge YouTubers, okay, you look at them, whatever they are talking, you know, you think, you know, are you, you know, do you, did you actually spend ten years on a subject such that you actually have something, you know, you know, substance to talk about? Vast majority, no, they don't have nothing. For example, one of the popular, you know, I, um, YouTubers, you know, many YouTubers become popular because they are talking about politics. You know, once you talk about politics, if you are on specific side, then you will have followers. You know, tons of followers, tribal. You know, because they want to your side to win. So may, many of them become extremely popular, especially if you know how to manipulate people. You know, one of such example is Owen. Uh, o Owen, you know, the black girl. You know, she's she's a very uh, kind of sinister character. Although I support her because she is anti-social justice, but she is like just you know, talking shit, you know. So there's a difference, you know. One thing is that you can become extremely popular. There are certain things you need to do to become extremely popular. That's one thing. But that does does not mean you have substance. You know, you don't even know what you're talking about. On the other hand, you know, you, you can be the great in doing something like Jordan Peterson, for example. You know, a lot of people on YouTubers criticize Judah Peterson. You know, like they they think they know what they're talking about. Oh, Judah Peterson, he's an idiot because you know, oh God, is this that? Oh, f go fuck yourself. You don't know nothing. 
Jordan Peterson no things okay I can tell even I don't know religion you know that much but you 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 watch Jordan and you can tell there are decades of diving into all the books you know on, on, on the subject matter that's the point have you have have you you know dove into books for 10 years you know not going to parties or watching movies you know that that's what substance uh, means <laughs> so you know it, what what a wonder is that you know look at google now alan posted a lobster uh, emoji okay look and google is censoring it what the fuck what kind of world are we living in you post a lobster google is censoring it you know that we, we the fucking social justice fuckheads have created a society like us you know the situation you posted the lobster you know uh, the emoji and google is censoring that why because <laughs> there there it is emily because you know what because lobster is associated with uh, Jordan Peterson because he often uses the lobster analogy because he you know the social structure of lobsters you know he talked about that and you know in his book so Google is censoring that incredible you know the live the world we are living in censorship heavy heavy censorship and Ripper is like Ripper is like oh wait but does average American know about it Oh, you 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 are just reading Twitter too much. Actually, social justice actually is, it doesn't exist. It, it it only happens in California. Look look what's going on in the world. Ah, uh, well anyway, that's the world we live in. You know, that's um, you know, uh, depends on your perspective. You know, it's like some sometimes it's pessimistic, sometimes it's optimistic. But I, uh, I don't think you know the USA. Our situation is that good, okay? I think it's um, bad. Anyway, uh, anyway, so okay. I think that's it for today. Uh, we talked about uh, an hour. Anything else? Lobster hierarchy. So I'm gonna write read. Uh, Candace Owens. Yeah, that's a girl, a black girl. You know what? Let me, oh yeah, and Owen uh, Benjamin. Okay, let me tell you about those people <laughs> because I've studied them. You know, you study them. You look at what their character, what's their nature. Okay, you look at what's name. Ca uh, Candace Owen. Okay, she's a, a right winger. You know, I support her. You know, I, I follow her because I I'm very much against the social justice fuckheads. So I support her and social. You know, the, the American left. I talked about this before. Anyway, I follow her. So, but she she's not a good person okay she's she 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 is um let me just pinpoint the interesting parts she is a she is a political she's a politician okay she's a politician type of person she know what to do to get followers so in the mere two years you know since about 2018 or 2017 she became a superstar from nobody, from a nobody high school student, she became a urban superstar on YouTube, on Twitter. You know, you, you, she's got I don't know one million followers or something. She became a superstar, and now she has her she has her own radio shows. You know, like like me, talk show. She talk, and she has good setup. You know, professional room. You know, studio, and inviting guests to talk about you know political stuff. But anyway, her she she her nature. She's a um. She's not a good. She's not exactly a good person. She is a, a politician type. A everything she says is almost precisely aimed to create more followers. Okay, that's her character, and uh, you know, uh, playing you know the, a good player in the game of politics. That's what she is. And Owen Benjamin. Um, Carl Benjamin is that Carl Benjamin or or uh, or who is that? So Carl Benjamin, it's uh, right. I think you are talking about Carl Benjamin. The wait, I don't know who is Owen Benjamin. Okay, I don't know this guy, but I know Carl Benjamin. No, you know, also known as Sargon of a Card. 
Now he, now oh, okay. So first of all, Owen, uh, Candace Owens. She doesn't have substance. Okay, she is just bullshitting. She is just bullshitting. Like you kind of like Trump. Okay, she's like <laughs> the same kind of uh, way to grow grow followers. She know exactly what to say, and she has you know. And another important thing about this. Uh, YouTube, you know, the, the stars that you ha you need to have a pretty face. That's one of the characteristics to get to gain a lot of followers. But let me talk about Carl Benjamin. You know, also, what 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 the fuck is going on? Reconnect successful. Okay, I'm still alive, right? Let me talk about let me sh uh, uh, talk about Carl Benjamin. You know the uh. uh Sagan of a card, so he is also someone. He's like no, no substance. Okay, now I also Sagan of a card, Car Benjamin. I respect. I think he's a great person. You know, on on online and also you guys. You know, you you rent. You know, everyone has opinions. Some someone will say, oh, I don't like Car Benjamin. Oh, he's an idiot because this that that that. You know, but to me, Car Benjamin, I respect him, and I think he's solid. I like you know and uh, uh, but however however I would say he has no he he doesn't really have substance okay he is someone who is smart who read you know who read who started to read about these issues a lot and you know a rationalist she is just a rationalist rationalist average not a great you know it's not like he's a great thinker she she doesn't you know he doesn't introduce anything new. There's no fantastic speech or you know the, uh, or anything. There's nothing new. He's just uh, you know some some smart guy and become a YouTube star. Okay, I think that's it for today. So Reaper says uh, uh, demonic. I think we've been talking for. Hundred minutes already, almost. Uh, let's see, sixty, uh, fifteen minutes. Okay, so let's see. Demonic violent play. So Ripper says, "How do you clean your mice and keyboards?" I actually never clean them. <laughs> Can you go over your regimen? <laughs> I I'm a lazy bum. I'm not. I'm I'm not nerd. My my room is a mess. Here is better. Well, anyway, my I. I almost never clean my keyboards, uh, but after maybe five years, when they become extremely extremely dirty, then I might take out the keys and clean them. I did that once. Okay, that's it. That's it for today, I guess. Uh. Stream being shut down by Google for too too many lobsters. Bye guys, have a good day. <laughs>